Hello and welcome to the studio. My name is Dean and today's video is all about teaching you brand new beginners how to use GarageBand. And this is something I can get really excited about because my story is that about eight years ago, I was someone who loved writing and creating songs and I really wanted to record, but I didn't know anything about it. I was really intimidated and I wasn't a techie person. But eventually I jumped into GarageBand and I found it to be really easy to use. I began mastering the program and then fast forward eight years, I now run a recording studio and get to teach thousands of students online. So this isn't just about learning GarageBand, it's actually about helping you establish a foundation that you can build on towards becoming a serious artist or producer. And I'm setting up today's lesson just as if you were coming into the studio with me and we were sitting down and I was showing you GarageBand for the first time. And these are the steps that I have shown my local students who have learned to use GarageBand to write, record, and release their first albums. So my hope for you is that today is a landmark day in your recording journey. And without further ado, let's dive in. So before we actually get inside of GarageBand and start building out a song, I wanna show you the opening screen to GarageBand so you can set up your project correctly. To the left, you'll see several tabs, like the recent tab. This shows you the last several songs that you've been working on. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the new project tab. So as you look down here, you see that we can adjust the tempo or the speed of our song. Now you may not know the speed of your song and that's why they have the tap tempo feature right here. And all we have to do is click our mouse at the pace of our song. So let's say it goes da -da -na 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 so it's telling us, hey, the speed of your song is at about 98 beats per minute. Then after that, you can choose the key signature of your song. And if you don't know the key signature of your song, don't worry about it. Same thing with time signature. You can choose the time signature. If you don't know it, just leave it alone. And then finally here at the bottom, you have input device and output device. But I'll just pause right there and say, don't worry about this stuff. Don't get intimidated by it. I would say the main thing to look at is the tempo, the speed of your song. Use that tap tempo feature, make sure you've got it locked in pretty close to the speed of your song, and then hit choose. So the first thing you see is this menu here, and we have four different options for four different kinds of tracks or kinds of sounds that we can add into our project. So step one for us is gonna be our main instrument. That's the first thing we're gonna add into our project. And that's typically either a piano or a synth sound, or if you're recording guitar, that's gonna be your guitar. For now, we're gonna start with a software instrument. So I'll click here and simply hit create. Now by default, it always brings up the classic electric piano, but here's the really cool thing that I wanna show you is that you have this huge library of different software instrument sounds like basses, drum kits, orchestral sounds, synthesizers, pianos, and a whole bunch of other really cool and really creative stuff. Now, I'm not saying that you have to use all these sounds, I'm just saying they're available to you and it's an incredibly powerful resource and tool for you to build out your song ideas. So since we're starting with the main instrument of our song, let's say that you're using a piano. I'll click on the piano menu and I only have one option, the Steinway Grand, which is a great sounding piano. Really pretty, right? So now that we have a sound picked out, you're probably wondering, well, how did you just play that? How do I control and record these software instruments? We well, have two main options. The first one is to hit Command K on your typing keyboard, and it brings up what's called the musical typing feature, which allows you to play the piano or any other software instrument using your typing keyboard. Honestly, this is one of the most amazing features in GarageBand, in my opinion. And then the second way to play and record all of these software instruments would be using what's called a MIDI controller, which I have on my desk right here. It's a small keyboard. It plugs into your computer via USB cable, and then you can control and play all of these instruments using this little piano. So once you're ready to record, it's really easy. You can either hit the red record button here with your mouse, or you can do my personal favorite and hit R on your keyboard as a shortcut. So I'm gonna hit record and show you how it works. Then when I'm done, I simply hit the space bar to stop my recording. And then if I wanna play it back, I can hit enter to go back to the beginning of my project, or I can click anywhere in this ruler here and pick any spot in the song to listen back on.
But now let's say that your main instrument isn't a piano, it's a guitar. Well, all we need to do is go up here to the plus button. This is the add tracks button. We're gonna click that and of course we're gonna select the guitar track. And one thing to note is if you have a guitar, you can't just plug it straight into your computer. You actually need what's called an audio interface. It's this little box that's like a mediator, a go-between between your instrument and your computer, and it allows you to plug in a guitar as well as a microphone so that they can be recorded into GarageBand and into your computer. And now I'm ready to hit create. And as you can see, it gives you a ton of preset sounds to choose from. But one note that I wanna make is if you're recording with your acoustic guitar, you can come down here and click back and you can actually select some acoustic presets. I'll be playing electric for this one. So I'm gonna to go to electric guitar, clean, and let's say echo studio. All right, so I've magically got my guitar now. It's plugged in and ready to go and the same rules apply for recording. I can hit the red record button here or I can hit R on my typing keyboard. So I've got my guitar part down and now I need to magically get rid of this guitar. Hey, you didn't know you're gonna get a magic show too. So as we close out section one on our main instrument, the last thing I wanna say is whether you're recording a software instrument, whether you're plugging in your guitar, I wanna highly recommend that you turn on the metronome and record that instrument up against the metronome sound because it's gonna keep your whole project tastefully in time when you record with this click on. All right, so now that we've got our main instrument out of the way, whether you're using a software instrument, say a piano, or you're recording guitar through your interface, Face, let's talk about recording vocals. And this is where it starts to get really, really exciting. So of course we need to add a new track. We're gonna click the plus button again. And of course we're gonna select the microphone icon and hit create. So before we hit the red record button and start recording, there's a few things I wanna show you. Number one is you can actually double click on any track and rename it. So let's call this lead vocal. Then you can actually right click on this icon and you can choose a different icon, one that matches your instrument. So I'm gonna choose this microphone. And what this does is it just helps you keep your project organized visually, which is really helpful if you start stacking up track after track after track. Beyond that, I wanna encourage you to wear headphones anytime you use a microphone to record, whether that's your built-in microphone, whether it's an outboard microphone, because a microphone will pick up any sounds that it hears, not just your voice. So if you've already recorded some instruments, it's gonna pick up those in the recording too and just make for a muddy mess in the end. So make sure you wear headphones when using a microphone. And that can be as simple as your earbuds. It doesn't have to be over-the-ear studio headphones. Then when you're ready, you can go to the beginning of your part Hit R and sing a part. That was lovely, wasn't it? So now we're ready to move into step number three of this process. But before we go there, I wanna say two things. Number one, if you've gotten this far and you can record your main instrument and your voice that's something to be really proud of and really excited about. You're further ahead in the game than probably 80% of songwriters out there. And then second, I wanna mention that I actually have a GarageBand masterclass where I break down all of this stuff and a whole lot more in more than 25 videos. So if you're interested in going deeper, learning more about how GarageBand works, then check out the links in the description. All right, so let's jump into step number three, the automatic drummer. This part is gonna get really exciting for those of you who don't play the drums. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the plus button again, and we're gonna go over to this track here, the GarageBand Session Drummer. All we have to do is hit create, and it's gonna automatically create a drum performance to go with our song. Let's see what it sounds like. Da, da. So not bad, right? For one single click, I got a pretty decent drum performance. But here's the cool part. You can actually go over to this menu and you can see there's lots of drummers all with their own style to choose from. I can go through rock menus, alternative, songwriter, R&B, electronic, hip hop, and percussion. So you just have to go, what's the style and the feel of my song and choose a drummer that you think fits your style. I'm gonna stick with Kyle for this song because he's doing a good enough job. And I wanna bring your attention down here now. And the main thing I want you to 
look at is this section here where you can actually choose different preset beats that this drummer gives you. And here's another really cool thing. If you like this particular drum beat for your verse, well, you can actually create another section by hitting the plus button here at the end, and you can do a whole different beat for your chorus. So maybe one's lower dynamic, and then it goes up in dynamic for your chorus. Super cool. So we're ready to move on to step four in our song, and that is the bass, the boom, the low end to our song. And there's two ways that we can add bass to our song, but either way, we're gonna have to use the plus button here. And if you have your own bass, you know how to play bass and you wanna plug it in, of course, you would do that here and choose a bass preset. But we're actually gonna use a software instrument to create a bass line. So I click here, simply hit create. And then depending on the style of your song, you'll go one of two directions. If you have more of a pop or electronic or trap or hip hop, you'll go to synthesizer, hit bass, and you have a ton of super cool sounds to choose from. Lots of ones that I really, really like. But let's say that your song is more like the one I'm playing here. It's more singer songwriter, or you're playing it with your band. Then you're gonna go simply to the bass menu and choose from some live modeled basses. And now the question is, well, what note do I play for the bass? And that's where you need to go back to your main instrument. What were you playing on that piano or that guitar and in this case I was playing a C, a G, an A minor, and an F and so I'm simply going to do that on my bass guitar. But if you don't know the notes on a piano I have a little hack for you. You can actually just play the same note over and over and then we'll adjust them after recording. So once you've recorded it, you can double click on that region. You'll see your notes here. And if you click on a note, it tells you what pitch it is. You can see this is at C2. So I know my first note was a C. My next chord was a G. So I'm gonna shift that up until I get to G. The next one was an A minor, so I'll shift it up to A, and then I'll bring the last one down to F, which was the last chord in this progression. And now I have a bass line that matches my guitar chords or my piano chords. Now we're ready to jump into step number five, but before we get there, I just wanna say that you can add as many instruments and voices as you want to your project. You don't have to just stick with the ones I've shown you in this video. You can create more tracks for more vocals or more tracks for more instruments. Really, the possibilities are endless. All right, so now that we have created our mini song here, step five is gonna to be to clean up some things and to polish some things. It's also known as mixing. And here's the simple things that I wanna show you. Number one, as far as cleaning things up, if you go to the end of your recordings, you'll see that sometimes you have a mouse click or a pop or some weird noise at the end of it. You can actually shave that off by going to the bottom half of a region and you can shave it on the back or you could even shave it from the front if you had something on the front end of it. And you can do this for vocals, guitar recordings, really for anything. Then after that, we'll look at how to polish your vocals and instruments. We'll start with vocals and if you click on this track, you'll see over here in your library, there's a menu that says voice. We can actually click on that and this gives you some preset, some pre-processed options to choose from. You don't have to know anything about mixing. You can just click through these and see which one sounds best with your voice and your song. Da, da. So let's say the natural voice sounds good with my voice. If I wanna add a little more reverb to it, I can actually come down here to this menu, which I bring up by hitting B on my typing keyboard. I click on plugins and then scroll down to the bottom and you'll see master reverb. You can use as much or as little of this reverb as you like. You can also add just a little bit of echo. So let's try that. So it just starts to sound a lot more like it was recorded in a studio than in a bedroom. So here is the cool part. Outside of our voice, everything else is pretty much taken care of as far as processing and effects goes. All of the software instruments, they already have their own preset sounds. The same with the drums, the same with the guitars. So really the only thing that you need to process with this extra effect is your vocals. And now we're ready to actually export our song so we can share it with others. 
One thing that you want to do before exporting is make sure you have the metronome turned off because that will stay in your recording. So we'll click that off and then all we have to do is hit share here in the share menu and we're going to go down and hit export song to disk. Then of course you can choose where you want to put your file. My only suggestion is be very organized with where you save your projects and your song files and your exports. Then of course you can choose the name of your song here and you can come down here and choose what file format you want to to export your song in. I would suggest using mp3 if you just want to do a quick export, you want to share it with friends, it uploads or downloads quickly. So once you have that, you simply hit export and you are ready to share your song. So that's all for this GarageBand guide for beginners, and I hope that you feel really excited and really empowered to go start recording your own music. And here at the end of this video, I wanna mention again that I do have a GarageBand masterclass with over 25 videos where I break down all of the creative tools and features that GarageBand has to offer. And it's crazy to me, but there's over 6,000 students in this course worldwide, and I started thinking, why are so many people jumping into this course? Why am I getting such great feedback? And I think one of the big reasons is that when I created this course, I kept the beginning of my journey in mind. I was someone who was excited, who had potential, but was very intimidated, was not a techie person. And so I designed this course to be as simple as possible. I didn't use any technical language. And yet I wanna set up a foundation for those who are very creative and have a lot of potential to be able to build into a serious recording artist or producer. So if you master the content in this YouTube video and you're ready to grow even more in your creative Activity within GarageBand, then feel free to check out the link in the description for my GarageBand Masterclass. This has been Dean. Thanks for joining me in the studio today, and I will catch you in the next video.